Uh, it's lovely to be back. This is my third gathering, and it's great to see uh, lots of old friends uh, and to have the opportunity to meet some new people. Uh, so I'm going to be speaking on some relatively recent work that I did together with Ellie Baker and Sophie Summer. But as you'll see in this talk, it's got ties to a number of things from earlier gatherings for Gardner. Um, and the starting point is map coloring. And I find because I'm American and I see talks in the States, everyone always uses a map of the United States, which is incredibly boring. So I have a map of Africa, um, which has a much more interesting arrangement of countries. And part of the reason that I like this, let me see if I can get the cursor visible. Um, so there's the question of how many colors does it take? Um, and Africa gives a really nice illustration of the fact that if you want to use the smallest number of colors possible, but make the regions distinguishable, you're going to need at least four. Because if you take a look here at Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and late Victoria in between them, you'll see those four regions all touch each other. Right? So you'll need at least four colors. And I'm guessing that most, if not all of you, are aware of the fact that you, in fact, need exactly four colors. Um, no more. Although, for practical maps, you can't be that fussy. You'll notice I had to put some countries underwater. Um, so from a practical point of view, four countries isn't so great for actual maps. Um, but this is this famous theorem, the four color theorem, which says that for any map on the plane or the sphere, four colors suffice. And that's great, but it's kind of boring because it's just four colors. And the pictures just aren't that interesting. So for those of us who like to make cool models, it's kind of nice to go up to more complicated surfaces. So it gets interesting, for example, if you consider a map on a toroidal surface. So if you go on the surface of a torus, you need more colors. Um, in fact, it turns out you need significantly more colors. The theorem is the seven color theorem. Um, for a map on the torus, seven colors suffice, and no fewer. There are maps that require seven colors. Um, and there are a lot of really nice demonstrations of the fact that you need seven colors, so much that there is sort of this hobbyish group around this. Um, let me show you one of the demonstrations. Um, so you'll see here are a couple of tori in a couple of different views. Um, the bottom one is the one that has a map of seven countries on it. Um, and some of the colors are a little bit hard to make out on this. But you will see that each of the colors touches all of the others. Um, and if not, you can come and look at it in some more detail later. Um, for those of you who are mathematicians, you'll recognize the top is the dual, which is the complete graph on seven vertices with no edges crossing. And this, in fact, was made, appropriately enough with the timing, for gathering for Gardner 7. The top one was knit by Sarah Mirabel Castro. Um, and uh, the bottom one was crocheted by this um, Carolyn Yackel person who some of you may have seen before. Here's another one um, that actually also has a, a tie to the gathering, although I'm fairly sure it was made before the gathering started. Uh, this was actually, it's a representation of the Unger Leach map on painted hydrostone. Uh, and this was done by Norton Starr. Some of you may know him. He's a perennial visitor to the uh, gathering who unfortunately couldn't be here this year. Um, coincidentally, he was also a college professor of mine, although at the time I'm not sure I was aware that this was sitting in his office you know, only dimly. But this is one of the inspirations for this more recent work um, that uh, Ellie Baker and Sophie Summer and I have done. Um, in fact, they started it because they were interested in doing bead crochet. And the thing that's really nice about bead crochet is that bead crochet is commonly used to make bracelets, and the bracelets, gosh darn it, if they aren't tori. Um, so they started working on this, and they roped me in. And so we've designed a number of different types of seven color bracelets. Um, so this is actually an art exhibit piece that we made uh, for the 2010 joint mathematics meetings, the art exhibition there. Um, and these are lovely. They're, they're really nice. They're fun to look at. The thing about it, though, is um, they're kind of fiddly little glass beads. They're not that easy to make. Everyone can't have them so easily. And one of the things that we've been talking about a lot here is how much we want everyone to have all of these cool mathematical things. Um, and so the main reason why I wanted to talk to you about this, it's related to my uh, gift to you for the gift exchange, um, is that there turns out to be a, a way that's much more accessible to make these models. And that is you can make them out of these plastic craft beads. These are beads and the yarn and the crochet hooks and everything. You can get these at pretty much any sort of basic craft store, Joann's Fabrics, uh, Michael's. Um, they're big. They're easy to work with. They're actually the beads that lots of people use to teach people to do bead crochet. And they make really, really lovely tori. Um, and in fact, if you want to you know, sort of come and talk to me afterwards, I have them. There's, this is about how big they are. Um, and these are actually very, very doable. So what I've given to all of you is a card that has instructions for how to do this that come from this Math Horizons article that we wrote on this. Um, I unfortunately could not actually uh, get together the materials for everyone, but if you think you might be interested in making this, either here or at home, I've got a bunch of kits. These are all the materials you need for it, except for the scissors. Um, 
please come. They're yours if you want them. Um, I've got some, and I've got the materials in my room to make more. Um, and as part of that article, uh, we also put together a nice little instructional video online. Um, and we have actually had some, you know, someone test out the video and successfully make a bead crochet torus from it. Um, so please let me know if you would like a bead kit. Um, and uh, I hope you'll have a chance to look at this. Uh, of course, you can't really stop once you get into these things, right? So y you can actually go up a little bit. Um, if you go to a slightly more complicated surface, a two-hold torus, you can actually do eight colors. And so this is actually a fairly recent piece. I literally did this this last month. I figured out how to do this one. This is a beaded two-hold torus um, that is eight colored. Um, and I don't have that with me here now, but I'm wearing a similar one on my wrist. So if you want to come to me after the talk, you can see this. Uh, and if you're interested in graduating to more math and more complicated bead crochet, uh, Ellie Baker and I have a book coming out uh, this July that shows you about these things and torus knots and plane symmetries and all sorts of other fun stuff. And that website has a bunch of other seven color tori. So thank you for your time. Thank you.